Now, right, let me check this on this side. So that's recording now. Yeah. I've got this one. I pop this here. Yeah. Um, that makes closer to you too. Oh, yeah, good idea. And then I'll have this here in the middle. All right. That'll cover it for everything. Let's do it. All right, this is good. Okay, now we're going to take... <laughs> we yeah. can do this. Take two, there's a long gap yeah, between takes. Yeah, that's right. It's about <laughs> ten days. <laughs> All right. So, okay, here we go. So, welcome everyone to girlstennis.com.au. Hello. <laughs> this is our very special guest here today, Nathan Martin. He's been a coach or trainer, rather, of the great Leighton Hewitt and Sam Stozer and Casey Delacqua. And the people that we know for the moment, and I'm sure there's many more coming. So this is what we're just going to talk about today, is just really about girls tennis and how Nathan fits in with the training of girls tennis and some tips that he might have along the way. So, so Nathan, just to begin with, yep. um, what do you find with you with you when you're training young girls that really want to become a good tennis player? Um, look, Alison, I think one of the main probably priorities in regards to their training is just getting them to realise what intensity they should be working at yeah. um, and getting them to concentrate during sessions. I think you know, at a young age, anywhere from around 10 years old, it's quite important that they learn those two fundamentals. You know, because if they're getting, if they learn to concentrate and be more focused during a session, they're going to get probably 20 to 30 percent more out of the session, which yeah. is going to, you know. Yeah. Improve them by that those percentages as well. Yeah. So real. So it's like it's really focused, isn't it? Like it's really. Yep. It's good quality training because I've noticed when you do your sessions, like it's really good quality and just very specific. Yeah. It's not wasting time. Yeah. Well, it's training. Like if if someone's you know learning to focus and really concentrate, um, and they're training them with intensity and mm. with a plan, you know that's when you get great results. Yeah. If someone's training with a plan and they're focused but they're not training with intensity they're going to get less of a result but you yeah. combine those three things and you're always going to get a positive result yeah so i think a lot of time it's you know um, a lot of the younger girls maybe not realizing how hard they can train yeah um, which you know a lot of that is the responsibility of the coach and the trainer to draw that and make them aware of how fast they can move so you know little things like using time um, you know, recording them, timing mm. them, doing things, and then maybe even doing it yourself, or saying, "Look, you know, this is what you you could be getting these sorts of times," so that they can start to have something to say. Okay, well, there's a goal for yeah. me. And once they start to achieve those little time goals, for example, they start to gain a bit of confidence, and then all of a sudden, there's your intensity. No, I know that's right. And I remember, I remember you saying last time when we spoke was that that one percent yes. change every time. And also with the results, like you just said, with the timing, it just gives them a bit of a win every time to see yeah. that they're improving. So they get that satisfaction to see that they're going in the right direction. Sure. It's just it's great. When you have, um, say, for example, you have like Casey come, probably traveling around now, but when she's coming in here, what do you do with Casey, for example? Um, look, Casey normally comes back and she might have like a 10 day or a two week block yeah. um, training with us. So uh, just depending on how she's feeling, yeah. if she's quite if she's quite drawn and quite tired, we might, might have a bit more of a focus on flexibility and core. Yeah. If she's coming back predominantly to have a training block with us, and we would sort of plan a 10 day or a two week periodized mini periodized program for her, which would consist of you know say out of five days, we'd probably look at doing two strength circuits with her. Yeah. Um, maybe you know, a couple of agility sessions and a speed session. Yeah. So, you know, we give her a little bit of everything, but you don't want to overload no. her too much because if she's training every day and hitting as well and her body's not used mm. to doing that, she's yeah. going to get quite sore and, you know, which, which has its place. Yeah. But if she's going to play a tournament mm. two days later, you have to be careful with yeah. how hard you actually actually go. Yeah. But yeah, we try to just, you know, do as much as we can and, and um, of all the different, I guess, variables of training. Yes. With her when she comes back. That's um. When you, when is it, say a young girl who's out who's watching this now says, okay, well what what would you do to prepare yourself for a match as far as um, physically like stretching or what what sort of sort of program would you suggest for a young girl before say playing a game or playing their local tournament or something like, like for that? for a warm up or yeah yeah for a warm up so not actually yeah whether on the court sometimes I know when I've been at these 
Australian Open, I assume, and doing the, the band work yep. and stuff like that. So. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do. There's, I mean, if you sit there and watch some of the WTA players warm up, they'll do totally different exercises. Yeah. You could have 10 players and, and each one of them does totally different mm. exercises. But mm. the main thing, in, you know, if you look at a warm up or what is a warm up, basically you're just trying to increase your heart rate, which is in increasing blood flow, flow throughout your body, which helps to, um, you know, warm the muscle up, yeah. um, you know, move move oxygen and energy around your body and loosen up the joint so you know you're, you're, re you're releasing um, you know some of your fluid into your joints so they're loosening up as well so to answer your question look I think you know a solid warm-up should consist of you know five to eight minutes of cardiovascular okay. work so yep. skipping combined yep. with you know running yeah. whether it's around the court on a treadmill before a match or something like that or a bike and then you know what we call range of motion exercises which are more um, targeting the joints of the body, stretching those up, but it's more like a dynamic stretch. Yep. It's not like a static stretch where you'd just be holding it. It's actually more of a movement stretch. So, you know, you'd be yeah. opening up certain okay. chains of movement. Great, yeah. Um, and then from there, you know, we, you can also look at doing some certain activation exercises. Mm -hmm. So if you know that someone, um, for example, has weak glute muscles and you want to get those muscles sort of triggering so yeah. that when people do go out and exercise that they're going to be more inclined to maybe want to want to work yes. and, and keep joints stable yeah so then someone could go and do those at that time as well some of those exercises yep. and obviously trying to keep the warm-up as specific as you can with tennis so I always like to finish off getting people to do some shadow swings so yep. just like they're playing a like a full-on point mm -hmm. and just getting them to move hitting some forehands some backhands and maybe get them doing that for 10 to 20 seconds three sets through yep. then they're pretty much ready to walk out on court yeah no that's really that's really helpful because i know i do see the professions i do all that sort of thing yeah and sometimes ladder work as well yep, just yep. ladders on the court yep. but uh, no it's great to have all that variety too because you never get bored then of you know what you can do to warm your body up yeah with um i know I know um, with Leighton, he's quite intense, isn't he? With his and quite focused with his yeah. training and everything. So that would be a, um, and a, that would be great from your point of view to train someone like that, wouldn't it? Yeah. To have someone so so focused and be able to make such a big change. And do you find um, girls have that same intensity, like when they train? Or oh, look, I think it's just an individual thing. Yeah. You know, like if you compare Leighton with say Casey, they're both got different personalities yeah. and it comes through into their training as well yeah. it's not saying that they you know one's better than the other mm. you know they've both got their their strengths and weaknesses so yeah um but i think as a probably as a you know general foresight i'd have to say probably that the men probably train with a little bit more intensity than the women at this stage yeah um you know in saying that saw as a ranker training down at the Aussie Open this year and you know I was really impressed with not only what she was doing but the intensity she was training yeah, at okay, good, yeah. and evidently you know she went on to win the tournament and she mm. was just focused she was training hard doing the right things for the right length of time yeah. and obviously that means she's got the right people around her yeah um, so yeah but you know I think like I went like I said before I'll go back to it again a lot of it's just the education um, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. um, you know, what you're doing or what you're not doing. It's you need the people around you to be able to show you the right things yep. to do and how hard to train. Mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes I'll I'll get my kids coming in here and I say, what do you, what do you do with your coach? And I'll, well, they make me do a hundred jumps in a row. I mean, no one should really ever do a hundred jumps in a row. And not, that's not all coaches and it's not all trainers. Yeah. But that does happen, and it does happen in a lot of industries that related mm -hmm. to sport. So everyone needs to know their role mm. and, you know, um, you know, there's a right way to do things and there's a right intensity to train at and yep. it's finding that, that balance that yep. works for the individual. No, no, I agree with that. I think really finding the right team of people is really yeah. important, isn't it? It's like that, that's the whole thing with, um, with anything really in life really, but it's sure. really finding the right team. There's, an, there's one question I wanted to ask too was sure. um, that when... Um, as a, as a sport of tennis, mm -hmm. from a personal training point of view, do you what do you see as a sport of tennis for girls as as an overall thing? Because from my point of view, I think tennis is an amazing sport. How it offers so many different aspects to it, like it's got speed, agility, yeah, it's complex. endurance, it's strength, yep. and it can cover like the whole body. Yep. Um, 
to the point where even if you have a sore toe, it affects you or mm. a sore finger mm. because it's so. It yeah. need, you need you the need whole body. everything. Yeah. yeah, you do need everything. Yeah. So um, this was. Uh, this is the, something I'd really like girls and parents to understand why tennis would be a great sport for their for their girls to play, um, and it's also the, the longevity of it from you know from a young girl through through their life how that will help say as they get older like bone density and all that kind yep. of thing. Would you agree with any? Of oh that? look, you know, going back to what you what you just um, was saying before about you know the different dimensions of of tennis, the, the physicality of it. You know, it's characterised as a power endurance sport. So, you know, which obviously, you know, power is, you know, things yeah. like jumping and, you know, hitting the arm or whipping your arm yeah. around and doing that repetitively. Yeah. So, you know, you can imagine the effect that would have on your body. It's, yeah. it's quite challenging and it depends on the level that someone's playing. Sure. Um, as well as the speed of it and the power that they're, that they're generating yeah. for their shots. Um, but look, you know, when you look at what's involved with it, where you've got hand-eye coordination, You've got, you know, you need strength mm -hmm. um, to help stabilise the joints and just to make help enable you to move effectively. You've got speed, you've got agility, you've got, you need a lot of core stability because a yeah. lot of it's what we call unilateral loading. So you're just landing on one leg yep. and then driving out of there as well. And then you need the cardio yeah. base yep. to be able to maintain all those things um, for a set amount of time. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty much, you know, the. I can't really think of another sport that has all the dimensions, the physical dimensions um, of uh, you know what that tennis has. And I mean, basketball is something that's quite similar. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, you know, it's a combination almost like of between basketball and golf or something. Yeah, right. You've got to concentrate, and then yeah. you've got someone on the other end of the court yeah. hitting yeah. a ball back to you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So exactly. it's it's very yeah. very a very yeah. complex sport, but yeah. you know. If you can look at it like that, and I think a lot of science-based people will be, oh, this is pretty yeah. challenging sport, and then yeah. you get people that just go and play, and it's just more natural to them. Yeah, it's very true, very mm. true. Which is, what do you think about netball as a in comparison? I mean, it's a different sport anyway because it's a, it's yeah. a whole different set of rules. But I guess sometimes netball and tennis can be compared from a point of view of just movement, like there's about five, yep. you know, there's five or ten meters movement yeah. you kind of have in, in in that sort of area. Um, but it may not have the same dynamics as yeah. tennis, you know, yeah. with the, the jumping up, although oh, you can jump up. Definitely, it. like, some of the movement patterns are similar, and, yeah. you know, tennis is, a lot of tennis is about, you know, um, transition from shot to shot, Yes. and how people effectively do that yes. as well. You know, like we were saying before, if you haven't got good strength throughout your body, particularly, you know, transitioning from one shot, say, from a wide forehand, and you're trying to get back to the centre of the court, and you're planning that foot out, if you haven't got good strength through your body, particularly through your leg and that chain of movement, yeah. you know, you're going to struggle to get out of there and get back at the speed that you really need to. Yes, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, no, that's great. Hmm. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> is that, is it, um, is it enough for time or any more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah you go keep oh, going okay. for a couple of minutes. Okay, good, I can edit all this out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, that's great because with, um, with parents, I particularly find that it's important because obviously a lot of parents themselves may not have played tennis or they would have touched on it as a young mm. person but may not have a child. They might even have a, a daughter right now who really wants to push and excel and go le that little bit further and maybe need to know that this sort of information that you're giving now is maybe what they could help their daughter mm. with. Yep. And, I mean, of course, they can come and see you. You're based mm -hmm. here in uh, Sydney in Bondo Junction. And um, we'll give Nathan's details too at the end, so you can contact Nathan, and I'm sure you know you would be more than happy to yep, help definitely. anybody in that area. Sure. And um, but yeah, it's just I think it's a, a very uh, for for girls I think very particular. It's different sort of maybe fundamentals are the same as boys, but there's a different like you said a mental attitude and yeah. and there's different things to to handle with girls, and also they have different changes with their body that boy, them boys do, and I think it's all catering and um, yeah catering for all of that. And, uh, but for girls, uh, what would you say, um, anything, you know, from, uh, from say, you know, as a young person, even like young kids, like five or six year olds, I mean, getting them to be skipping and mm -hmm. dynamics and changing direction and that sort of thing would work? Yeah, well. look at a young age, you know, coordination, balance, 
yeah. and movement are, are important. Um, you know, you are limited a little bit in regards to their strength training. Yeah. If you can get them to do, you know, still their body weight exercise, so still squatting, lunging, you know, they can start to be introduced to like push-ups and things like that. Yeah. A lot of band work. Oh, yep. Um, but yeah, like at that age, they're still, you know, really developing. So you 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 want to keep, you know, the work quite light yeah. for them. Um, that's why like the coordination and all those sorts of things are uh, those sorts of exercises are important for them to do but you know particularly with women like I think you know in the past there's been a little bit of a stigma about um, women and, and strength training or weights training mm. you know and, and I mean uh, up until you know the age of, of 16 you know you, you don't really want to be using too much load with, the, with your training for, for females um, but once they sort of get around, you know, 16, 17, 18, it is quite important to be able to start challenging um, their strength yeah. and developing their strength. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do that, um, but it is important that I, I think, you know, um, women and, 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 you know, teenagers or girls start to understand that it's a really important facet of um, any athlete. Um, and their performance is to have a really good strength base. Mm. Um, it offers probably you know more than any other physical dimension. So more than you know, if you've got good strength, you know you're going to be okay. But if you've got you know good endurance or whatever, your body's still going to be you know get get challenged. The strength yeah. is probably the probably the most important thing, and it's something that it's quite simple to do and it's quite simple to develop. Yep. Um, as long as you know people learn the basic movement patterns or what we call the, the primal movement patterns which are like a squat, a lunge, a oh. pushing, pulling um, and rotating as long as they learn how to do those fundamentals okay. properly then they can start to load yep. and they're doing it with the right biomechanics they're challenging the right muscles and the body responds because the body adapts not yep. only quickly but you notice the adaption. Yeah. You notice the strength. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it yeah. and it reflects on on the court. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. That's really good to answer that question. That was one of my questions, which was, you know, what age group do you, what age do you think um, a girl should start doing weights? Because there is such a lot of different mm. viewpoints on that. But that's one that that viewpoint you just said now was exactly the one that I was told now 20 years ago or more. You yep. know, and uh, that so that's the stable, stable thing. And I know from my point when I started training like that too, it really from that age it really did help mm. get some that strength that you needed, you yep. know, for the the game. So that's great. So um, yeah. So is there anything else that you can think of that you might like to say? Uh, look, I think just going back to what we initially discussed, um, I think if you know, people out there, and if, if you know, you're a young teenager or, you know, mm. a, a seasoned tennis player, um, you know, you just need to look at, there's a right, there's always a right way and a wrong way to do things. Yeah. Um, I guess anything in life. And it's all about the people you get around you or the people you're getting help from or advice from. And there's a lot of resources online now, um, you know, people can research. Um, different yeah, ideas can. and things like that yeah. for their training. Yeah. So you know, train first of all. You know, train with a purpose. Yeah. Have a target. Reach that target with intensity. Yeah. Okay. And stay focused during the session. Yes. And I think those three things. It's almost like a. Oh, they're you know, It's like a fail-proof. Yes. You know, formula, me formula or method. Yes. So you yeah, know. They're and great. You know, otherwise we just end up going around in circles. Yep. Now that's really good because for the young girls that are out there and anyone who wants to be become better player, even as a, as a professional, they they are those three things that mm. are stable, aren't they? Yeah. No, and and look, and look, any parents out there also that uh, I think you know a lot of tennis parents cop a lot of flack yeah. from other parents <laughs> and and yeah. and coaches and trainers and and just yeah. other sports as well. Yes. Um, you know. And there are parents out there who spot on and do the right thing and there's, there's like any sport there's going to be parents out there who are over the top or maybe don't really put in enough yes and everyone's got i guess got their restrictions and things like that financial and time time restraints and things sure. like that so um 
you know, it's it, it's important to um, try and source a good team and get the get advice from the right people. Mm. Um, and yeah, you no, know, and, right. and, and there's a point where parents should say, okay, that's Alison's role, that's Nathan's role. Yeah. My role as a parent is, I guess, to provide food, safety and support. That's right. And input with the people in the team. Yes. What they're seeing and what they're feeling. Yeah. Um, you know, and not, I guess, trying to implant things in their children's head like, you know, you should be running harder, you should be doing this and that. That's really the responsibility of, of the coach and the trainer. And although you're yeah. getting paid to do those things, it's a relationship between the parent and the, the yeah. team and trying to get them to understand, well, this is why we're doing this now and that's why we're doing that. So, you yeah. know, parents, don't be afraid to ask questions because it's yeah. very, very important and don't be mm. afraid to be involved. Mm. Um, but, you know, know what everyone's boundaries are. Yeah, no, that's great. I really support that too. And I think... As, my, as a coach myself, I really do like that interaction with the parents, but not in the, but just as you said, where it's where everyone understands their role and they can respect each other's viewpoints on yeah. that. And I think that's, and then if you set those agreements up, I think you're just going to have a great, great team and you're going to work really well mm. together. Definitely. Yeah, and there'll be no lines crossing. And if there's any, if there's any issues to handle, then we can all sit down and talk about it, and you can actually sort through it without having any you know, major communication breakdowns where then, then in the end it's the child that actually suffers from that. So it's great to have the, the whole team work together. Yep. Yeah, it's a winning combination. It's sure. good. Yeah. No, that's great. Thanks, Nathan. No I problem, think, guys. I think, um, yeah, I think uh, that everyone, if you'd like to see Nathan's website, it is... Uh, www.energisehealthmanagement.com.au that's right. So we'll put that up on the screen and I'll put it underneath the video too so you can click on it and, and you might like to liaise with Nathan if you've got any questions. Sure. And, Feel um, free, guys. Yeah, it'd be great. That'd be really great. So uh, thank you for your time and thanks for your time no too. No problem, Alison. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. See you, guys. Bye. Bye. Cool. Oh, 22 minutes. Too easy. Thank you, Nathan. Great.